Hey everyone, this is uh, Brian KGB Glass checking in uh, Portland, Maine. Uh, thanks for coming uh, to this stream. Uh, this should be really cool. Uh, what I'm going to do today is uh, make a donut pendant from start to finish. Um, if you have any questions, shoot them out. Uh, myself or Sarah will try to answer them as we go. I um, want to thank Grassroots, uh, Ruga, Nikki, uh, Max, the entire team uh, for setting this up. This is really cool. Um, I've never done anything like this, so uh, kind of just, you know, going on the fly. But uh, this seems like a really uh, cool opportunity for you guys to see what I do. And uh, I get some company, you know, uh, in these uh, crazy times. Um, cool, so yeah, I think I'm going to just get right into it. And um, so the donuts are all borosilicate. Today I'm going to start with a piece of uh, 50 by 5 uh, clear tubing. And um, what I'm going to do is coil pot some color and drop it into it. So um, that's how I make the dough. So I'm going to do that right off the bat. So I'm going to take my piece of clear that I already have uh, pulled off of that tubing and I'm going to flare it open right here and start my coil pot. And uh, I'll give you guys a studio, uh, a little tour of the studio after the demo, show you some cool stuff. It is definitely time to make the donuts. What's going on, Liberius? Yeah, and you know, like, like I was saying, these are really crazy times, and I'm just so thankful that I still have glass as an outlet, you know, that I can still come here and, and create, you know, I'm just so thankful for that, because it's really what's always kept me sane, even when things are good, you know, I just, it's very uh, meditative for me, so... Yeah, very thankful I can still do this. So I'm just going to pump this out a little bit. See, that's about 50 millimeter. I'm just going to puff it out and open it up. And then this will be what, uh, this will be, in this case, many donuts. So I'm going to stretch it down. So you puff out for the hole. And now I'm just going to use gravity to open up this whole point. And as you can see, this giving it these little spins, opens it right up. So I'm just gonna open this right up. Bam. So now, we'll let this cool. You can see that's just red hot. And that's really how um, you work with glasses. You can't touch it, so you're just looking at it and feeling it. And the, the color of it will tell you the temperature. And that kind of tells you what to do with it and what it wants. Let's see, what's your favorite donut that you've ever made? And did you keep it for yourself? That's a great question. Um, man, that's a really, really tough question. And honestly, uh, I feel like some of my favorite ones I've let go. Um, and it's tough to pick a favorite when I've made so many. And so many mean something to me in so many different ways. You know, so it's just, it's weird. Um, some of the pieces, I rarely, honestly... I rarely keep pieces for myself because I want them to like get out there. But um, the pieces I did keep, um, I think were from around 2012. And some of my first uh, big collabs were with SNCC and we did some electro nuts and also salt. And uh, we did the salted nuts. And those were just, uh, they meant a lot to me. 
as far as um, the progression of the donuts and you know just working with people that I looked up to my entire career so um, I kept those and I kept one from each of those series and I still have those and um, other than that I really haven't kept many donuts uh, I really like to just get them out in the world although I, I kept the Gates and Donut um, Gates and Racco, another you know hero of mine that I was able to work with and uh, yeah I had to keep one of those which was which was pretty sweet but I haven't kept anything lately um, you know it's meant to be out there so I, I, I almost feel selfish keeping it for myself you know I want it to be enjoyed by numerous people so what great question grassroots uh, how many donuts have I made well I uh, started giving a donut bag with every donut in 2012 and um, since then since 2012 every day I've tried to keep up on it and it's kind of loose you know I forget where I am and I skip numbers a little bit but right now I'm right at right around 10,000 uh, since 2012 which is just mind-blowing uh, but and the first donut I made was 2007 so um, but it wasn't it wasn't you know my life wasn't just making donuts it was making so much other stuff and the donut was just a vision I had that I just really wanted to do it was kind of a goal I set or set to myself saying that um I just would really like to make donuts. So, you know, somehow, some way it happened, which is, you know, so amazing. But um, back to this. So I took that color, I coiled it on this piece of tubing right here. That's like my uh, my handle, my punchy. And now I'm going to melt this all in nice and smooth. So the other piece of clear is in the kiln. This is my piece of color, really hot. I'm going to melt this smooth. And then I'm going to drop this into uh, that piece of clear. We have a couple more questions. What kind of torch do you work on? Um, this torch is a GTT Delta, and um, but I actually use two. Um, I use this for most of my stuff, but I also have a 40 millimeter Herbert Arnold that I use, and um, they're they're pretty different torches. So sometimes I'll bounce back and forth. But, um, so those are my two go-tos. Then another question we had was, what's your favorite color to work with? Favorite color to work with? Huh. You stumped them. Yeah, it's <laughs> tough to say. Like, when, like the favorite questions I take really serious, because it's like, you know, there can really only be one answer. And I have such a hard time, you know, narrowing it down. You know, I really, really like um, chocolate crayon or grizzly. You know, either of those chocolate colors, um, I really, really enjoy. They can just be so milky, buttery, and it looks just like chocolate, you know? So, um, i say one of those two. So you can see here, it's getting smoother. All the ridges are coming out. I'm not sure if you can see that with the heat, but it's getting smoother. The coil lines, which is similar, uh, if you're doing ceramics and you coil pot something in ceramics, same thing, only with glass. But um, so I'm going to smooth this out. We're almost there, and then I'll drop it in to the clear. But this is how I start every donut. Um, you know, I've done 10,000 of these. Blowing, you know what I mean? It's crazy to think about. Are there any new techniques you want to learn or a specific technique that has eluded you? Hmm. Um, you know, I wish I could learn everything. Uh, but like the techniques and stuff, um, I look forward in the next year to working on the lathe a little bit more and fine-tuning my lathe skills. So I haven't had as much time on it as I would like. And um, I've had it less than a year or right around a year. 
So um, I think, you know, really building some techniques on the lathe is what I, I would like to do next. i got a bunch of questions for you. Uh, Ruger was curious. Name one glass artist you'd like to work with that you haven't worked with yet. Ruger. One glass but I want to work with. That's a pretty long list, too. Um, Alright, let me think for a second. Let me think for a second. Because there's, there's a lot of obvious people, you know. Um, I want to chime in. One really cool thing is that I've been, I've been with him for about 10 years now. And I've heard him answer this question throughout the years. And luckily, the answer always has to change because oftentimes he's been able to actually work with that person that he was, he like wanted to work with. That is very true. So I'm very curious to see what the answer is now. I mean, um, there's people like Banjo who, you know, I see um, the donuts and numerous donuts stacked on a piece, I feel like it'd be really crazy. And then I feel like that would be pretty cool. But then, you know, which is just like, whoa. And then, you know, there's people that I just want to work with that I haven't been able to work with, you know, like like Slinger, who's actually on this coast, and yet um, I still haven't been able to throw down with them. So, you know, it's, it's one of those most things. It's like, man, there's, there's a bunch of people um, that I want to work with, but, uh, I think Slinger and Banjo would, would definitely be top two, uh, really now, but, you know, it's like, to say that, even hearing myself say that, it's like, there's so many people for so many reasons I want to work with, um, it's, it's almost weird, but I'm just, you know, that's one of the best things is seeing someone else's vision of the donut and what it could be, you know, and, uh, Real quick, back to this. What I'm going to do, this is all nice and smooth. So what I'm going to do now is drop this into the clear, and then that will make the donut color. I'm just slide this over a little bit. Liberia says Sagan. <laughs> uh, yeah, Sagan, exactly. Like some moon donuts. Oh, my gosh. So this is the clear I showed you before, and what I'm going to do is drop it into here. I'm going to take it to here, drop it into here like this. So that's what I'm going to do once this is warm. I'm just going to warm this up first. And this would be known as a blow-in, as far as um, the technique that's being used. trick is to get them both to the temperature where they're accepting it. Ah, and Kurt B. I wanted to work with Kurt B so bad, and um, we almost had something lined up, and then this whole thing happened. And uh, he was like one of those bucket list people where it was like, oh my gosh, like, bucket list. And then, you know, all this stuff happened, and now it's kind of like up in the air. But, you know, it's kind of about, you know, setting those goals and achieving them. You know, you got to kind of just manifest it, work hard to make something happen. All right, so I'm going to drop this in here. And then the color will coat the clear. So now, as you can see, the color filled in all the clear. So I'm going to tear this hollow piece off. Pop that hole, and now we're back to just a piece of donut tubing.
I'm gonna throw this in the kiln, and I, use, I, I probably made 70, 80 donuts on this one hand, I just keep reusing it. And that's just, uh, you know, you want to kind of be as efficient as you can, work with glass, you know, waste not one. Uh, so, yeah, this guy's been through a lot with me. If it wasn't donuts, what food would it be? Um, if it wasn't donuts, I don't know if it would even be a food, you know what I mean? Like donuts... You know, I often say, I didn't choose the donut life, the donut life chose me. And it really did, you know. Um, I needed a job. And I was like, where's a kind of easy place to work? So I thought a breakfast place at night was genius. And how hard could that be? So I got a job at Dunkin' Donuts working the graveyard shift. And um, it developed into me finishing donuts, to baking donuts, to be in the head baker, and then I ended up uh, baking at numerous other bakeries in the Portland area, South Portland, Cape Elizabeth, and uh, I loved it, and that was kind of what I was doing to uh, supplement my learning to blow glass, because it's just so expensive, um, so that's where the inspiration came from, you know, um, and it's just... If that wasn't my inspiration, I, I can't say it would be a food per se. I'm just, I don't know what it would be. But um, the donuts have kind of always, you know, been my inspiration in life. And, you know, just taking what you're given and doing the best with it. What's the coolest food piece you've ever seen? Yeah, there's a lot of cool food pieces out there. Um... See, I really have been digging uh, boots lately. The glass by boots. Glass by boots. Glass by boots. Shout out to her. That's someone else I want to collab with as well. Um, I love her food. Her food looks so freaking good. Um, Strawberry banana donuts. <laughs> yeah, she uh, she's been crushing lately, and uh, I just think those are freaking awesome. We got more questions. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, fire away. I'm just, so right now what I'm doing is I'm melting in, this is what's going to be the dough for the pendant. It's a really big piece, so I'm melting all this in, I'm going to stretch it down, and then I'll take a piece off of this, and that will be the pendant. So, update on where we're at. Do I still bake often? No, I don't, <laughs> I can't cook and I rarely bake. Um, since this whole thing happened, we started making muffins at home. And that's the closest I've been to baking, other than getting baked, in like a really long time. Um, sometimes I do miss it, because I did it for so long, and uh, I did a lot of it. You know, I'd work super long shifts every day. Um, and it was great. I enjoyed it. But I um, haven't done it in a while now. Yeah, this, this, this fish chair is fucking legit. I just gotta say, I can't remember where I got it, but holy cow, where am I? Oh, this thing's so great. So comfy, too. And then, who was your favorite glass artist to collab with so far? Or not glass. Who's your favorite artist that you've collabed with so far? Favorite artist I've collabed with. Um, my favorite artist. Man, I'm so horrible with favorite questions. I think... Give me a second. Give me a second so I don't just, I don't want to rattle off a name. There's been so many collabs over the years. My favorite artist that I've collabed with. I mean, the the weird way, the weird answer I should say, is the time uh, Voodoo Donuts made a bunch of donuts based on mine, which is kind of a collab because I was kind of the inspiration for it. And they were artists because they made those donuts look exactly like mine. Um, and that was beautiful. That that was one of the craziest, you know, times in my glass career. Was seeing real donuts that look so much like mine. Um, but as far as glass artists, favorite artists that I've collabed with. Man, I mean, Gateson's got to be up there. Because that was just, you know, when I first got into glass blowing. And I would read the flow, and I would see a picture of one of those universe marbles, and be like, wow, like, that's what's up. 
you know, and never, ever did I think I would be able to collab with them. And, uh, you know, doing that collab was pretty, pretty sweet. Uh, meant a lot, you know, like stuff like that. It just, it means more than you can really say when you get to work with someone that you've looked up to your entire career, you know. It's, uh, it was great. Really, really great. What's the largest donut you've ever made? Whoa, good question. Good question. Um, yeah, let me show you. I'll show you what could be, what could be the largest donut I ever made. Um, so I think it is, but there, there's some out there that are taller. There's some out there that are wider. I think it should go to weight, um, which I haven't weighed them yet. I'm going to have Sarah hold this. You know that? And then this, uh, this, this is one of the biggest. If you look at this next to my head, this thing's freaking huge. Um, packed with some super lemon haze, which I love. It's, it's been my strain of choice lately. But this is like a sweep. I love this. It's enormous. I keep it at the shop. It's so big. Let's go with it. Alright. Get this back in the flame. Go ahead. Throw this over here. So, yeah, I think that's the biggest. And I can measure that. I'm not sure how big it is. I'm thinking like five, four inches, five inches, six inches. I'm not sure. It's big, though. I think it's yeah. Have you ever worked with Joe P? I have not. I have not. But that reminds me. See, Joe P triggers Muller. And when I think uh, some of my favorite people to collab with, Muller was definitely Peter Muller, hands down, is one of my favorites. And that's where it's like kind of talking jogs my memory. But not only the work, but working with him is just so much fun. He's such a great guy. And then just seeing the stuff we produce, it's just I can't even believe I'm a part of it. Um, love his work. Love it. Um, did I actually answer the question or no? No. <laughs> okay, what well, was the question again? I'm sorry. Did you have you ever collabed with him? Um, no, no, Jokey, no. I definitely would. That's not by choice. <laughs> <laughs> and we have tons of people asking about Donut Fest Seven. Yeah, um, Donut Fest Seven. Obviously, you know, I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen with it. It's the first Friday in June, National Donut Day. Uh, I think it's the 6th or the 5th. Um, I'm just going to see what what things are looking like then, you know? There's a chance it might just be online. There's a chance I push it back, maybe to a later date. Uh, there's a chance I do it online and, you know, a soft online and then push it back to something where we can meet in person. Um, maybe I'll do it outside, you know? I'm not really sure. Uh, but I am going to make a bunch of glass like it's happening because... You know, I really wanted to, but people's, you know, health is more important than anything. So, um, I just want to make sure safety and people's health is, is, um, the priority. And we just don't know what that'll be like in June. So I'm feeling it out. I'm going to give updates constantly, um, on Instagram. I'll let you guys know, but I'd say worst case scenario, there'll be a, a pretty fun online drop and, um, some dope collabs. And some dope solo work. And that's worst case scenario, uh, which should still be pretty fun. And then I saw Ruga asking, Ruga, what, uh, where does KGB come from? Uh, KGB was a nickname of mine um, from many, many years ago. Like, kind of through all the different circles I've been in and all the things I've gotten into, I've always had numerous different nicknames. And KGB was a nickname I had at the time when I started blowing glass. And that time was right around Operation Pipe Dreams. So I started blowing glass. Two years later, Operation Pipe Dreams happens. And I'm like freaked out to sign my glass with my name on it. Because I'm like, am I going to go to jail? So I was like, oh, you know, nickname's KGB. I'm going to run with that. And that's what I'll use for now. You know, and I never... Never knew if it would stick or what would happen. I just wanted people to know what they were getting without my actual name on it. So, um, and that's where that, you know, there's a little more to it, but uh, that's, that's, you know, the basis. That's the basis. 
Another but, question. But if you've seen Rounders, Rounders is a great movie to watch. I don't know if anyone's <laughs> ever seen that, but I would check it out. Um, what was that, sir? Did you grow up in Maine, or did you move there from elsewhere? Nope. Um, I grew up right, south, right outside of Syracuse, New York, um, in Liverpool. I've been in Maine, in Portland specifically, since I was 18 or 19, right around 18, and I'm for going on 41 this year, so been here a little longer, and uh, I love it. Maine is just a beautiful place, like uh, the people, the area, like everything's just great. So I can't imagine ever leaving. Maybe moving somewhere else in the state, but I can't ever imagine leaving Maine. It's just an amazing place. All right, stretch this down a little bit more. I'm gonna pop a hole. Punty up, stretch it down, and then I'll get to that pendant. What's your favorite donut in real life? Great ventilation. <laughs> that's, that's good ventilation. Um, my favorite donut... What, this is finally a question I can answer. What's my favorite something? Because I actually know what my favorite donut is. And that would be a day old yeast chocolate frosted plain donut with no sprinkles. Um, I like the texture and the firmness of the donut. You know, eight hours, nine hours after it was made, I was never a fan of fresh donuts. Like fresh out the fryer. People are like, oh, I love how soft it is and I love how gooey it is. And I'm like, that's disgusting to me. I like it to like, kind of like set and like firm up. And uh, so yeah, so I like it a little bit old, not stale. I don't like stale donuts. It's like a little bit old. Um, no sprinkles. No sprinkles. The Marvel's Beast's favorite donut is strawberry frosted with no sprinkles. And it took almost two years of dating before I could get him to make me a donut that was strawberry frosted without sprinkles. Yeah, it's true. Her favorite donut, real and glass, is strawberry frosted with no sprinkles. And it did take me a while, but when I did, it was more special. It was very special. So, well, go for it. Yeah, day old food for sure, man. I don't know why. It's just, uh. So now, you see, I changed my handle, and I'm just going to stretch this down a little bit more. And then I'll pop off a piece and make a pendant off it. So this is, this is where we're at now. It's donut color. It's still pretty hot. There we go. Why do neither of us like sprinkles? I don't know. <laughs> I guess that's why we like each other, though. You know what I mean? As opposed to why we don't, it's more just like, oh, we have that in common. I, I never thought about that as a thing we have in common. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's like, um, I don't want to say it's like too sugary <laughs> to eat a donut, but that's how I feel. I'm like, yo, there's enough sugar already. I don't need something else on top of it, you know? Um, I don't know why. It's really weird. I'm just picky. <laughs> so what was your favorite collab between the two of us? Oh, I guess it's the Marvel's Beast subject. <laughs> yeah. Um, my, I think my favorite, there's a lot. There was an Aaron Brooks piece we did. That was like a tongue coming out the back of a bell bottom, a piece of acid, a little tab of acid on it. That one was fucking sweet, and not many people saw that. I don't think we got good pictures of it. Um, that piece was sweet. The Halloweens are my personal favorite. Uh, Frankenstein, uh, Dracula, you know, those are some of my favorites. What about yours? For that, definitely the Halloween donuts. It's something where I just have all these ideas in my head, and it's just somewhere where I can fill them out, um, 
And each year there's one Halloween donut. So each year I have a new favorite collab, which was my favorite Halloween donut of the year before. So at one point it was Frankenstein, and then I loved doing the stab donut. So I had knives where I would make it look like the jelly donut was all slashed and stabbed with the jelly oozing out. I think those were fun. Any of them where I can become a little hyper-realistic, I think are my favorite. All right, so now I'm going to pop another piece off of this, and then we'll use that for the donut. Oh, yeah, the Jason. Jason. Oh, the Jason. The was Jason, sick. too, was really fun this year because yeah, I was, was able to do Jason and still have the staff donut. Yeah, the Jason Bong we did was was amazing. That that was kind of like a milestone piece. Um, I'd say I, I think that's the nicest piece I made on the lathe. Um, but yeah, that was such a sweet piece. Shout out to Chilla Bugs for scooping that. Chilla. I got the state name. <laughs> a bunch of familiar faces in joining us. So where is uh, everyone from out there? Where are you guys at? Pop this off. No, I got a smaller piece of that tubing. So that's donut color. So now I'm going to stretch this down even smaller, and then we'll make a pendant out of that. Chicago, Boston, Fort Collins, what up? We got Boston. SoCal. Cool. People all over, man. Really hope you guys are safe and healthy and, you know, doing the best we can. We're all in this together, man. Love Denver. Love Denver, man. Do you ever see your pieces again out in the wild after you make them? Oh, man. You know, it makes me so happy to see my pieces out in the wild. Like, if I'm, you know, wherever I am, if I see someone wearing a pendant or, like, a hat or one of the grassroots hats or anything, like... It really makes my day. And usually I'll go up and say something, be like, hey, thank you so much. That's fucking sweet. But uh, I love it. I love seeing it. What was the question? Did you ever see your donuts out the line? Yeah. 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 I was, I was, I was like, what am I answering again? Yeah. Um, I do. Not as, you know, I work a lot, so I'm kind of reclusive. So I don't get out too much. But it's but, really fun when we're at like a fish show and there's a donut pendant and we get excited and we say hi, but the connection hasn't hasn't been made about who exactly he is. But that's my that's my favorite, seeing him out in the wild and complimenting, but someone not necessarily knowing who you are. Wow, well, we got some more Central New Yorkers. You could uh, Well you go with And what do you think about how recreational has been rolled out in Maine? <laughs> well, it hasn't, you know. Um, it's just, it's that, it, from what I understand, and I'm not, I'm not a grower, I'm not that involved with it, um, but it seems like it's a mess, and I'm super thankful for our medical system, which seems to be fucking on point, and um, the local caregivers in Maine are just absolutely amazing. Um, 
you know, best of the best. So thankfully we have that as an option. Um, hopefully they figure out, you know, how to do all this recreational stuff. But in the meantime, our medical is amazing and i um, super thankful for that. So this little piece is going to be the donut. I'm going to pop one off of there. I can get rid of it for it. So it's half made. You know, you get the donut shape. So now I'm just going to cut it off right here, right there, and pop a hole here, pop a hole in her, get it going. When are the next pizza donuts coming? And what other foods have you integrated in your work? Oh man, I would love to do some more pizza donuts. Uh, BMFT, love collabing with him. Great dude. Another um, trip to Denver. <laughs> yeah, to Denver we go. Um, see, what other foods have I done? Right. I've done marshmallows with Danny Camp. Those are pretty sweet. Um, I've done some macaroni with Benjamin Glass out of Denver. Um, he's the man. Uh, just made me think of something else. And then I forgot it. Sarah and I have done a good amount of food. Worms, gummy bears, um, some gourmets, candy corn. <laughs> uh, trying to think of other food ones I've done. I there are uh, chicken wings, the pot wings with Justin Barglass. Uh, the tacos, the Choco tacos with 603 Glass, who was living in Denver area. Lions. Oh, lions, yeah, the lemon donuts. Those are freaking sweet. And Oreos. And the Oreos. That's what it was. People are, people are. Yes, the Thank Oreos. You. <laughs> you guys know. Thank you. I, uh, I totally, I space sometimes. So I'm just cleaning this up. And then that's going to be our donut right there. I'm going to put a blow tube right in that hole. And then pop a hole there. And Cheetos. <laughs> and Cheetos. Rude boy. Love it. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, hey, I mean, this is really fun. You know, it's cool. I've never done anything like this. So, uh, it's cool to have people here hanging out, you know, watching. So put that onto its own blow tube. Do you prefer sculpting or hollow glass blowing and why? And what's your worst break? <laughs> oh. oh man, I've had some breaks. Um, I think I like hollow more. But it also makes me respect solid sculpting so much because it's tricky. You can't just puff something out, move it around. Like, there's so much more to it. Um, and I haven't done that much with it. So, um, when I see Sarah sculpt, I'm like, holy cow. Like, it's just um, it's very hard. It's very difficult. It's a great ability to learn. The... Biggest piece I ever lost. I'm not sure. I think I blocked those out. To tell you the truth. But I can show you in a second on my stool over here. 
there was I, what I felt like was the nicest piece I had made up until that time I was making it. And as I was walking over here, me? as I was walking over here, it uh, fell, and I didn't want to go onto the ground, so I tried to catch it. It burned my hand horribly, bounced off my hand onto this um, stool, but like it was coming to here, but I didn't want to burn the stool. I didn't want to go on the ground. I didn't want to break. So it was like my hand blocked it. It still kind of landed on here, and then I picked up the grabbers and got it off. But trying to save the piece and the stool was like was most important. And um, the burn healed, and uh, the piece made it. And uh, it was a small scar, small scar. And that's the battle wound of that stool. You know what I mean? Still so comfortable. Like holy cow, the foot thing's perfect for working. Um, really comfy. But he didn't burn his bowling hands, so we were safe there. Yes, and it wasn't my bowling hand, which is sweet. Speaking of bowling, do you, did, have you ever done a bowling pin with donuts? Um, I've made a couple bowling pin pipes that were uh, like a an eclair style donut shaped like a bowling pin. And um, made one of those for a friend. And other than that, maybe I I actually did a run of little bowling pin oneies a long time ago. Um, probably like 2008 or seven, and they were really weird. But um, they looked more like milk jugs than bowling pins because the shaping wasn't the best. But, uh, yeah, I've been, uh, Bowling Pin Donuts has been on my, uh, my, uh, to-do list for limited editions. I want to do a run of ten numbered, you know, the ten bowling pins. And, uh, I think that'd be pretty sweet. Anyone out there bowl? You guys bowl out there? I feel like there's some bowling in Denver. I see a lot of glass blowers bowling and it just, it makes me happy. How many hours do you usually spend working a week? <laughs> oh, man. I could probably tell you how many I'm not, and that'd be easier. Um, but, uh, shoot, I usually work like 10-hour days, seven days a week. Um, since this whole, you know, pandemic's been happening, it's, it's changed it a lot. But prior to that, you know, I'm kind of just a machine. And I'll take, you know few days off here and there and, you know, regroup and enjoy life. But I just, I love doing this so much. You know, I can't even imagine how many hours, I'd say well over 70. I'd say 10 hours a day, seven days a week, but I'd probably say more than that in all honesty. Um, but it's, it's out of love. I come here to work, but I come here um, to relax and, and to think about life. And it's just really great. You know, it's just great uh, thing to have in your life, you know, melting glass. So, just to jump back in here, we got a donut, donut pendant, bam. Uh, how long does it take to make my average donut pipe? Um, well, like you could see, just the prep for this took about a half hour, and then I'll get a few off of that. So they're, I think they're right around an hour or so, um, give or take. But then, like, as soon as you get into larger donuts, rigs, tubes, um, you're in numerous hours. So it, it really does depend on the piece. Just sprinkles and drizzle can add, you know, a ton of time. I'm supposed to just quick drizzle as supposed to sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. And uh, tonight, I think we'll do sprinkles. You guys have any uh, recommendations on what to frost this with? Any ideas? <laughs> oh, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Hold on, my beers. Let me hold on. Hold on one sec. Don't go anywhere.
This is a Size Love who I fucking love working with. Steve Size Love collab um, for Liberius and uh, had to fix it. I think it looks pretty good. Boop. Get this out to you uh, tomorrow, buddy. This is a great Sherlock. Uh, I love this style. All right, so we have Azul. We have crushed opal frosting, <laughs> crushed opal sprinkles, something sparkly, a G spout drizzle, match your hat, that beautiful chocolate, orange, chocolate, guava, rasta. I was going to show you this. So this is... Um, Sneak peek at one of the new Grassroots KGB hats, which is freaking sweet. I love this. I was thinking of doing this blue. Oh, so great. So thankful for you guys. Love this. You had to take it off my head. I've been wearing it all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, it's very sweet. Very sweet. Can't wait for these. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, I was just thinking today um, about the first time I called Ruga and was like, hey, you know, just this glass blower that makes donuts and I would love to, to make a hat, you know, and uh, we kind of related on, on how we came up in the struggle and um, he kind of took a chance, you know, and I feel like everything has gone really well since then and, um, you know, I can't thank you guys enough, grassroots. Uh, Ruga, everybody, you know, Max, you guys are amazing. So, you know, thank you for the past however many years. What has it been, like five years? I don't even know. But, yeah. So, yeah, so this is a teaser. One of them, I got some got some more teasers for you, but this thing is sweet. All right, so in honor of this guy, I was thinking of doing this blue. I got this blue right here that will match it almost spot on. So, and then, of course, we're throwing a G-Sprout on there for sure. All right. Let's see here. I got sprinkles all laid out. Got some frosting colors laid out. So... Um, the way I do the frosting is I literally just draw with, you know, small pieces of glass on top of the donut and melt that in. So it's, it's very similar to like um, watercolors where the paint is dry until you get it wet and then you can actually paint on it or paint with it. So once I get this glass hot enough, it'll start moving and then I can just apply it around. And then as soon as it cools, it's stiff and that's where it is. So, what we're going with, we're going to go with uh, the blue raspberry, some sprinkles, and a G-sprout. I think that'll be pretty sweet. Yeah, and I'm pumped that one of you, uh, one of you viewers gets to take this home, and I'll be able to ship it out tomorrow. Love giving stuff away. If I can make a living on just giving shit away, I would. Shit. <laughs> Have a seat for this because it's a lot of small flame stuff. I'm gonna warm it up slow. I'm gonna go around with the frosting.
another question I had. Um, do you usually listen to music while you work? And if you do, what do you listen to? Um, definitely love listening to music while I work. I go through a lot of phases. Like right now, I'm listening to, uh, listening, watching, uh, like a 102195, which is on YouTube, a fish. Great show. Great show. Um, but yeah, I prefer music. We do podcasts sometimes. Sometimes I watch TV. But um, I listen to a lot of Fish, um, Mo, STS9. Back in the day, like when I listen to STS9, I flash back to like 2002, 2005. And um, where I was at my glass career, uh, listening to blasting, like just so loud, STS9, I had some crazy breakthroughs with technique and um, what I was making. And so when I hear that, it always triggers that and like gets me excited and like, I don't know, it's, it's really good for, uh, for my creative juices. But, and then I also, you know, I love like a lot of hip hop and whatnot as well. So kind of always mixing it up. Um, also listening to like Trap It in Japan. I'm not sure if you're familiar with those, but um, pretty mellow uh, mixes on there. Just filling in the frosting. Are there any TV series that you're currently watching? Um, we are watching Cheers right now, which is kind of funny. Um, Sarah had never seen it. So I don't think she was born yet. <laughs> and I grew up watching it. There's a little bit of an age difference. And uh, so, yeah, we've been watching Cheers, uh, which has been pretty funny and really lighthearted. Um, we watch Walking Dead um, as far as, like, you know, shows we try to see each week. Um, but other than that, I think Jeopardy. I think Jeopardy is our go-to show that we watch. Um, we play along. We're pretty vicious. Uh, we're pretty cutthroat. We but, sacrifice Jeopardy for the stream tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's. Uh, I think that's our – the only thing I can say we, we do regularly is watch Jeopardy. Um, and Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah's the man. But – Did you see Tiger King? Yeah, I did. That was actually a great distraction the day we watched it. I needed a distraction that day, and it fucking distracted me. And we actually ended up making a Tiger King donut, and um, Sarah crushed it. She did so freaking good. It's on my Instagram feed if you want to check it out. But, yeah, we uh, collabed and auctioned that off uh, last week, and it's, she did so, it's so funny. Yeah. It took me like three hours of sculpting and just drawing. and It was definitely one of the most labor-intensive donuts I've ever collaborated on you with, with you. Um, so I'm just using a smaller flame, a smaller torch. I'm just going to melt in the uh, frosting. Frosting right there. I got the blue. What is the favorite place, what's your favorite place you've ever visited? Favorite place I've ever It's that favorite question again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I really liked when we went to Colorado and went to Mount Evans. We were on the top of Mount Evans. Oh, that, yeah. Was that that hill, that mountain? That was pretty cool. Being up that high was, was really amazing. Uh, like 15,000 feet. I was like, holy shit. Um, that was pretty cool. Um, okay. 
that be my favorite place? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like in 10 minutes, I'll come up with an answer if I think about something else. What about Amsterdam when you were 18? <laughs> Boom. Amsterdam. See? Forgot about that. I was a judge in the Cannabis Cup when I was... I think I was 19. Okay. I think I was 19. I went there alone, and uh, it was amazing. And didn't speak a lick of Dutch, and uh, got a lot of looks. You know what I mean? But uh, it was amazing. Got spun, figured out like public transportation. I was really proud of myself. But um, yeah, that was sweet. That was a hell of an adventure. Like I'm like reflecting on that and like. Crazy. All right, so this looks like it's getting right to it. Give it another question, Diane or Rebecca? Uh, I don't know who Rebecca is. We haven't gotten that far in the series. <laughs> Sarah relates to Diane a lot, <laughs> and uh, I think when I think about it, like growing up, I was more of a Rebecca guy. However, uh, I don't like I'm still remembering like everything, so I don't remember that much. But uh, <laughs> such a great question. Yeah, I have to wait. Like kind of like Sarah said, I have to wait for Rebecca to come back to be like, oh yeah. This is what she was like. So I don't. I just don't remember because I was young. That's a good one. Um, what's your advice to someone who wants to start blowing glass? Um, I would say take some lessons. Um, I never took lessons a lot when I was first starting, and I think that they actually go a long way. And um, practice, practice, practice. You know. Um, if you are going to learn to blow glass and it's a hobby, I think that's how you should start off first because just jumping in as a career um, is going to be a struggle. You know, mentally trying to perfect something and then saying, but I got to eat and how do I make this? And that's kind of the path I went down to some degree. And it's just so stressful creating stuff under that kind of stress. You know, coming up with really good ideas and executing things when you're worried about, like, the lights getting turned off. So, um, having some money saved, if you are doing it as a career so that you're not reliant on sales, is good. But, um, practice. Read um, Contemporary Lamp Working, um, Volumes 1, 2, and 3. I think you should read that before you even pick up a torch. Um, but, yeah. Practice, don't give up, you know, unless you don't want to do it and then give up, you know, try it out first. Maybe try out renting somewhere before you drop. It's so expensive to start. Um, just uh, might make sense to rent some time and try it out for a week or two and see if you even like it. Um, once I saw it, I couldn't stop. Like it took a hold of me. Like it, it just blew me away. No pun. But, um, yeah, it's just amazing. It's really fun. Just working with fire, like creating stuff. It's just man, I never never would have thought this is what I'm doing, what I would do, you know. So that one's good to go. But if you want to blow glass, I say do it. You know, don't wait. Find a local glass blower, hit them up, bug them, go from there. Got a couple questions off Instagram. What's your favorite strain of weed smoke? Uh, my favorite strain lately has been the Super Lemon Haze. I've actually been loving it. Um, that's all I've been 
between the uh, Space Candy and Super Lemon Haze, I think those have been my two uh, go-tos for a little while. Alright, we have a question about the heart hunt. Do the hearts for the heart hunt take longer or less time? Way less time. The heart hunt ones are pretty quick. That's actually a pretty good uh, beginner thing to, to learn how to do. Um, just basic sculpting, kind of, you get it hot, you learn how glass moves. Um, I think at some point we're going to start doing some lessons, and that's going to be like the beginner lesson. I think it's a great place to start. Yep. And did you uh, find any of the Heart Hunt? Um, have you participated in that, or did you just see it online? That's a fun thing we do. For those that don't know, on Valentine's Day, Sarah and I hide a donut for every year we've been together somewhere in the city. And so this year was 10 years. So we hit 10 hearts um, throughout the city. And then we kind of post where they are and we let people go get them. And, uh, you know, it's kind of, uh, it's fun for us to do. And it's a nod to the Valentine's Day bandit, which is like this you know, 50-year-old Portland um, legend. Legend? The legend. And um, and every year, this group, or the, the Portland Bandit, um, goes around and puts paper hearts all over the city, all over businesses, you know? And it's like the theory of it's hearts for people who might uh, get Valentine, for people who might not have got one. And um, I love the idea of that, you know? So... We kind of did our own little spin on it. And I think we've done it three years. Three years now, and it's just it's really fun. Soupy Kingsman asked, have you ever worked with small-time artists? Oh, yeah. I mean, I work, I mean, I've worked with everybody, really. Usually, time is the only thing holding me back from collabing with people. But, um, yeah. Clavin right now with someone who's been blowing glass like three years. And he does some amazing work. Because, you know, everyone's the same. You know, we're all just glass blowers. We're all just trying to, to do what we do, you know, get our vision put out there into glass and uh, hopefully it, it uh, makes people feel something. Well, nice. The guy who asked about um, starting to blow glass, he said his college offers a course. Thanks for the advice. He might start taking it. Oh, definitely do, man. Definitely do. You're a, like, you'll get addicted. It's just, it's, uh, it just, it, it grabs hold of you. All right, the person asked about the hearts. Yeah, they found two last year. What? Good work. Good work. And then some this year, too, with this brother. We got a cheese sprout. Can you see that cheese sprout? A little weird to see. Got a G sprout in there, and now I am going to sprinkle it. Give it a little warm up. And I'm just going to keep asking some of the questions off Instagram. Yeah, definitely. Might have already answered this. What's your all time favorite piece you've ever made? I feel like I've said this is one of my favorite pieces recently, and I can't remember which piece I was talking about. Oh, that really cool one that was like that light blue with the pistachio color and pink and purple, I think. I don't know if that was my favorite. That was oh, like, I was like, that one was freaking sweet. No, you've mentioned that recently. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm not sure. I hate, I hate to give such horrible answers on the favorite questions. Um, so tough to say. Do you prefer cake or yeast donuts? Uh, yeast for sure. Definitely a yeast fan. When did you realize that the donuts kind of took off and that was going to be your thing? Um. I think around 2011, 2012, because even when I got the bags made in 2012, um, I, I had to buy like a thousand of them, like blank, and then I get them printed locally. So I was like, man, I want to be stuck with all these bags forever, because there's no way I'm going to sell a thousand fucking donuts. But I really wanted the bags. And, um, you know, those years after, it just, you know, I would sell more and sell more and sell more. And, um, you know, I, every morning I'd wake up, I'd be like, wow, this is so crazy. I can't believe like, this is my job. You know, it was like something I'd always dreamed of. I'd work really hard to, to do. And then it was, you know, so like, I'm not sure when I was like, oh man, this is it. Like, I'm still, you know, I don't even know. What was the question again? When you would, like, at what point you realized like the donuts were taken off. Yeah. And that was going to be your thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Before um, they took off, he always wanted them to be his thing, I think. Yeah, like, it, it's what I was always shooting for, but, you know, I had my head down, and I was working so much, I, I just, I I don't remember the fact, or, like, the time of when I was like, oh, man, this is it. But doing the bags was, was a sign of me saying, you know, I'm fucking going for it. You know, like, I want to, I'm putting my all into this. I used to have donut boxes, donut bags. Um... And so probably right around then, you know, 2012, I was like, this isn't a joke. I I want this to be my jam. And um, I really started taking it seriously. And I think it, I think it reflected, really, in um, the work I was putting out and uh, everything else. Well, what about potato donuts? Yeah. Do potato donuts, very main, very main. Um, they're so heavy. Shout out to Holy Donut. I love the Holy Donut, but they're just really heavy for my liking. I like it a little bit airier, which is why I'm a yeast guy. But he loves the chocolate sea salt, Holy Donut, and he usually eats like a half of it at a time. Yeah, I'll eat 10 of them a half at a time. <laughs> um, yeah, those chocolate sea salts from the Holy Donut are, I, you can't stop. You know, you say you're going to eat a little bit and you're just going back and going back. And then a question again. How many bags have you gotten into a little right around town? Yep, just over 10,000. I got to say my favorite, if you're like, oh, what was your favorite collab limited edition donut bag? If that was a question, it would be grassroots for sure. Um, it was, I think the most intricate bag I'd ever done was the bear. And he's all high. He's got a hat on and shit. It was pretty sweet. Yeah. That was... I think my favorite bag, hands down. It was so sweet. During the time that you were at Royal River Glass, what was the coolest piece you made there or the most interesting piece you saw be made? Ooh. Well, I worked with uh, Mr. Gray for many years, and some of his Cacti Dangle pieces um, were by far the craziest pieces I've ever seen made. Um, Watching him blow glass, some of the pieces he made back then, you know, was inspiration to me now. But, like, hindsight, holy cow, I can't even believe some of the pieces I saw get made. But, yeah, we there were so many talented art, artists that uh, traveled through there. That was an amazing studio to work at. Thanks. Seymour says, do you try dough donuts? 
all vegan, super delicious, and creative styles. Where's that? We want vegan donuts. Yeah, yeah I'm not <laughs> familiar with that, but I'm in it. Let me know. Yeah, let us know where Dough Donuts is from. Cool. That's a little hot. We got the cheese sprout. Got some sprinkles. So everything will look different as it cools. Yeah, I think we're good to go. So I'm just going to warm this up and then give it a quick little mouthpiece. Throw it in the kiln. It'll sit in the kiln for 10 hours on an annealing program. And then tomorrow, I'll be able to come in and check it out. What do you dream of to make next? Um, I dream of. I've been having a lot of visions. The donut characters, like the the drizzy I just did. I've been visioning um, some cool little donut dudes, little donut with legs and arms. Um, I think that's what I've been kind of dreaming about, thinking about. Like, man, this is this is what I think I'm gonna do a line of maybe for donut fest. I'm going to take this off the blow tube, throw it in the kiln. Did this whole donut thing come from The Simpsons? Oh, no, not at all. Like I was saying before, the donut thing all came from uh, being a donut baker. And, uh... Just getting super baked at work. I mean, I used to get fucked up. But um, just getting super high, sitting there being like, man, there needs to be a fucking donut pipe. And there wasn't one. And I was like, man, this should be my jam. And that was before I could blow glass. Um, that was just a thought that I had. I was like, man, this would be a fucking good idea. And um, thankfully, I figured out how to do it. Do you remember the piece of glass that inspired you to blow glass? And if you do, what was special about it? I remember this pipe that I had working at uh, at uh, Dunkin' Donuts. And it had to have been like 99, 1999 ish, 98. And it was just, it was an inside out sidecar that had some red on it. And it was so crazy that there was red. You know, because, like, there's so limited colors and everything. I was like, holy shit, this has red. Like, anything's possible. And uh, I don't know if that was a piece that made me, like, want to blow glass. I think um, I think it was uh, watching some friends blow glass in Vermont that made me... That showed me that I wanted to blow glass. And um, Nick Dude, Nick Glass Dude, um, I think it was him watching him work. And it was some, he used to make some cool donut pieces, not like frosted, but just like donut shaped. Um, watching him work back in the day, I think, really fed my desire to want to learn more. And uh, I don't know if it was a specific piece, but just, just watching people work, you know, it's, uh, it's really intoxicating. So, well, yeah, um, that's done. So, uh, let's see here. Yes, sir. No, I do not eat a donut every day. I wish. I wish. Um, I don't have them as much uh, anymore, but I do uh, sprinkle them in there here and there. I looked at Sarah being like, is it okay if I get one? <laughs> um, but yeah, so before we do this giveaway, I will uh, give you a quick tour of the studio. Show you where I work and whatnot.
And then I got the kiln right over here. So we work in here. Um, looks like there's finishes in there. Some prep I've been working on is in there. So over here is um, cold working station. Do some lapping, cutting, polishing. Uh, over here is Mr. Santos, who is our resident blue tongue skink, who is not in the best mood today. He's just about to go to sleep, and he might be shedding soon. Yeah, we can't get him. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, let's get up a little bit. All right, so and then over here, uh, over here is uh, photographing. Then some of the new gear. So we're looking at this is one of the new hats. Yep. This is pretty sweet. We're taking it a little different, um, different angle than we usually do, and I freaking love it. Love it. Pretty sweet. These are just the samples. Um, nope, the studio is not part of my house. It's a few blocks away. Um, I live in downtown Portland, and the studio is a few blocks from my apartment. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy you guys were able to check this out. Like, no problem. No problem. So that's one of them. This is another one of the designs. Let's see if I can get that. The lighting's not the best in here, but pretty sweet. There we go. But I'm, I'm digging this. I'm digging this print. This donut print is nasty. Ah, so sick. So sick. I love the designers over there. You know, you give them some ideas and they fucking crush it. The and donuts we trust underneath. So these will be dropping uh, June, first week in June for Donut Fest. Really pumped. We got the dad hat with a little space action. I think this is freaking sweet. Then we got some spacey donuts up in there. Yeah, grassroots team crushed these. Then we got some new winter hats coming, which I'm really pumped on these. Yeah, and then, so this is a little big for me. I'll, I'll, it's uh, the new uh, double-sided hoodie. It's, it's a little big, but I'll give you the uh, a taste of it. So this is just sweet. Yeah, big fan of this. Pretty nasty. Pretty sweet. So... This is the one side. And you have some sprinkles and donuts on the other side. Pretty badass. Really excited. Ah, you guys crush it every time, man. Every time. And this... Everything plus plus even more um, will be ready in June um, from me and Grassroots, and uh, just can't wait. Yeah, oh, this thing is so so nice. Like very excited. Yeah, reversible pockets on both sides. It's really nasty. I'm just I'm loving this. Just the colors are sweet. So, uh, oh yeah, and then um, more of the tour. I, I'll give you more of the tour because uh, why stop there? Um, a little food area over here. We are here so much you'd think we lived here, and uh, so we cook here a lot. Um, and then, as I was saying before, the lane is right over here. And um, this is the lathe. I love this thing. Um, lit in HSA. Was built in like the 50s, so it's a very old machine, but runs like a champ. 
straight as an arrow. Um, yeah, so all the bombs I make get made on here. And uh, hopefully be making a couple of those this week. Let's go over here. You can see the color that I use is right over here. And this color um, comes in rods. So um, from all the different companies, I keep everything right over here. So it's easy access. I can kind of jump right in there. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much the suit. And this whiteboard was the only thing in this place when we went for a viewing of it. And it sold him. And he loves it. And it's the one thing we kept. Yeah, I was like, there's a whiteboard, though. How can we not get it? There's a whiteboard. <laughs> All right, you want me to set right back up up here? Mm -hmm. So I think we're good to do the giveaway. Um, does that sound right? I'll take a quick hit. Yes, this place, we have so much space. Thankfully, um, we were able to organize exactly how we want to do it. Um, do I take customs? Yes, sometimes when I have time. So um, it's always worth just hitting me up and seeing where I'm at. You just never know. Um, all right. So, yeah, let's give away this pendant. Those are our final count. Looks like we have 58. So 58 entries. Yep. And um, if you are the winner, we need you to respond within two minutes um, to Grassroots or myself or on the chat somewhere. Two minutes. Um, otherwise, we'll go right to the next person. And um, yeah. Pump. Let's see. Uh, let's see who can get this. Um, so I'm gonna do a random number generator on Sarah's phone, um, and it's gonna be between one and fifty-eight. Did you want to answer another question while I get it going? Yeah. Let's see. Let's see some other questions. There are a lot of questions. Will the hats have satin liners and stash spots? Yes, for sure. Um, grassroots staple, and it definitely will. Favorite donut shop in Portland and favorite donut to eat? Um, I really like Frosty's, but they're not in Portland. Um, Tony's is really good. I think High Five might be my favorite because they really crush the yeast donuts. Um, so I think High Five. Dan, Dan of Maine, who's your favorite bowler? I love the bowl. Obviously, if you can see, there's a bowling alley literally 40 yards from the studio. So uh, that also was a huge selling point in this, in this shop. Uh, favorite bowler would be Norm Duke. But of course. Um, see. What was it like doing work with Steve Sizelove? Man, and I showed you that Sizelove collab earlier. Um, amazing. Steve is one of those like genuinely good people and just so full of knowledge and really happy to share that knowledge. Um, yeah, and that's part of the reason I got that late is because I was out working with them in uh, Indiana. Okay. So I was out working with them in Indiana and I saw him working on the lathe and I was like, wow, I got to get into this. So I um, ended up coming home and Within a year later, I just kept looking for a lathe and finally found one. So, yeah, Steve's the man. Love his class. Love him as a person. Uh, man, great to collab with. All right. What did you make before donuts? Um, I made everything, really. Um, stemlesses, inlines, dub bubs, bubs, dries, whaties, you name it. Um, would make everything whatever people wanted or whatever I was feeling, you know? Um, but donuts were always what I just wanted to make donuts. So thankfully that's what I do. All right, I think we got the n random number generator is uh, generating. We got between one and 58. We're gonna hit the generate number. Can I see that? 
We got number 17. So we're going to go to this list. We have compiled. Oh, you can't. I'll go show you like this. So we got our list of comments. And number 17 is Muggsy Mester. Uh, I believe that's an Instagram. M U G G S Y M E S T E R. And he had a question, or she, sorry. Um, they have a question, um, if the universe is a donut, what does that make a churro? <laughs> that, that is a great question, and I believe the answer is delicious, because churros are fucking awesome. Uh, so, yeah, great question, though. And the universe is a donut. So, this person, Muggy Meister? Yes, it would be him. So we're looking for Brian. Brian, if you're watching live, try to reach out to... Yes, reach out to uh, Grassroots on Instagram. Or right in the chat. Or right in this chat on Twitch. Um, or however you are watching, because I guess Facebook, you could do it as well. Yep, and it looks like he's on Facebook. Okay, so we will... It's 9.27. We'll give him till uh, 9.30, which is a little over two minutes, which I think is very fair, you know? And then we'll go from there. Uh, let me see if I have any other... Questions that we didn't get to. Oh, yeah, he already responded. He responded on Facebook. So, grassroots has him. So, congratulations, Brian. You got it. All right, so we got it. We're good. We're good. All right, awesome. Congratulations, man. Love it. And, uh, yeah, I, like I said, I love giving shit away. So, for people who are still here, if there is still people here, Let's do one more giveaway. I'm going to go um, see what I have for uh, stuff over here. Stay right here. I'll be back in one second. And uh, let's give someone else something as well. All right, so we got these three mood mats uh, from Mood Mat, and I wanna we're gonna give these three mood mats to the next person, uh, the next number we draw. Can't be the same guy twice, even if the random number generator says so. So we're gonna give some other people a chance. So uh, we're gonna random number generate a number, and it is six. So we're gonna look to our trusty list at number six. And it's looking like Kyle Frega. Kyle, and the last name is F-R-E-G-A. Um, yeah, two minutes, and uh, these three are all yours. And his question was, what flavor of donut is your favorite to make? Maybe it's one you haven't created yet. What other flavors would you like to try? Great question. Uh, my favorite donut to make, I think, is the sugars. Um, jellies and chocolate sugars. Love that shit. Um, those are my favorite to make. And um, what's the second part to that? Maybe it's one we haven't created yet. There's so many. There are so many flavors I want to try, like cinnamon. Cinnamon donuts would be really sweet. Um, but, yeah, the, the sugars, the jellies, the chocolate sugars, those to me just... It looks so spot on. I just, I really love it. Uh, let's see. Funker33. Um, Brian won, I can't remember his, not his thing. He won the first one. The second one is going to be Kyle Frega if we can find them. If they are not here, we are going to pick another name. Um, another minute or so. And again, thank you guys so much for watching, hanging out. Um, this was pretty fun. And thank you to Grassroots, um, everyone over there. They, you know, they're the best. I, I couldn't thank them enough for everything they've done for me over the years. And um, it's awesome. I appreciate it, guys.
the big mood mats. I like these. If you're not familiar with mood mat, check them out. He's the man. Do you another question while we wait? Yeah, I'm going to see another question. Uh, let's see. How did I get into glass blowing? Um, well, I actually uh, met some kids at a fish show that were selling grilled cheeses, and they were like, yo, um, you want to hang out sometime? And I was like, yeah. And I went and hung out with them in Vermont and watched them blow glass with no, no idea that I was actually going to do it. And um, after watching a while, I was like, holy cow, this would be sweet. And then uh, one of them ended up moving up to Maine, and they were like, you want me to teach you? And I said, that would be amazing. And um, the rest is history. All right, Kyle, you got another minute or so, and then we're going to draw another one. Let's answer one more question. Do I know Jam Bear Glass? I don't think so. I don't think so. Let's see. Oh, this is a good one. Does blowing glass and bowling have any similarities? Um, to me, they do, because um, they're both things you do basically by yourself, where the outcome is almost solely dependent on what you do, um, how much time you put into it, um, you know, is, is what's going to result and in, in, uh, will, will affect the results that you have. You know, more practice, higher scores, more practice. Uh, nicer pieces, but also like when I'm bowling, it's very um, zen for me. You know, as soon as I get up there to bowl, nothing else exists in the world, and, it, and it's really great. And I feel like I get to that that mindset also when I'm blowing glass. And it's just um, you're focusing on the glass. It's just you and glass. And when all the distractions of the world are gone, it's just a really good place to be. You know, and, and that's why I love bowling as well. It's because I get that when I'm bowling. So. Um, yeah, there, there are similarities, oddly enough. All right. I'm going to say going once. Going twice. We're going to pull another number. We're going to pull another number. This is four three mood mats. 47. 47. I can't pronounce this. I think it's X Chels X 421. So it is... X C H E L S X four two one. It looks like an Instagram name, and um, yeah, if you reply in two minutes, you got these mood maps. Ah, Chels four two one. That looks like you. <laughs> awesome! Congratulations. Um, I think I can get your info if you. I don't know uh, how to get the info. Well, we can grab the info because we are friends with her on Instagram. On Instagram, yep. All right. We will get your info, and I'm going to get you three brand new mood mats out the door tomorrow. Just look for a DM in, in your uh, Instagram, and we'll reach out. Oh, I'm sending you a donut tomorrow. Oh, that's hilarious. Awesome. Well, then I guess I'm going to add this in there. I'll look at the name. Where are you from? Just because some of the addresses, I'm like, oh, like what state? Oh, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'll be sure to get this out with your package tomorrow. Awesome. Awesome. Love it, Mass. Cool. Yeah, well, um, tomorrow is mailing day, and I will be sure to add these to that. Um, yeah, so I think that's going to do it. Um, thank you guys so much, and uh, maybe we'll have to do this again because uh, this was pretty fun. And uh, hope you guys uh, stay happy, stay healthy, and uh, be well. All right. See you later.